The PIC32 has five 16-bit counter timers. And what these do is they just count the rising edge of digital pulses. So we have a digital pulse train coming into the counter. Every time an edge goes high, the counter increments. And this pulse train here could be coming from a sensor. Uh, for instance, maybe uh, an encoder on a motor. Or it could be coming from the peripheral bus clock. And if it's coming from the peripheral bus clock, then you can see why we would call it a timer instead of a counter. And in fact, that's what uh, Microchip calls them. It calls them timers. Uh, and in fact, they call them timer one up to timer five. So with these 16-bit counter timers, uh, you can count from zero up to two to the 16 minus one, uh, or just over 65,000. Now, there's other things that the uh, counter timers can do besides just count input pulses, but that's what we're going to be focusing on. So if we want to see how this works graphically, uh, here's a block diagram. So here's the input source. And again, the input could be a sensor, or it could be the peripheral bus clock. So this is an external source, and this is uh, an internal source. And that goes into something called the prescaler. Uh, and let's say that we're working with timer 2. So I'll call it prescaler 2. And what the prescaler does is it allows us to uh, make a count on less than every single rising edge. So if we want to uh, every second edge or every fourth edge or every 64th edge to create an input to the, the counter, then that's what the prescaler can do for us. So if, as an example, this could be a, a 1 to 64 prescaler. So every 64 rising edges coming in, it only creates one pulse or rising edge going out. And then that output goes into timer 2 which I'll write as TMR2, because this is the name of the special function register that holds the value of timer 2. So if we want to ask what's the current count in timer 2, we can write a line of C code that just says count equals timer 2. And count here is an unsigned integer. Now, there's one other thing we can do with this. Uh, we can, so as it is, as I've set it up now, once it counts up to 2 to the 16 minus 1, it's going to then roll over to 0 and start counting up again from there. Uh, we can make it roll over at some other value besides 65,000 and some. And we do that with another register, PR2. This stands for period register. And here, period refers to the period uh, between rollovers of the, the counter. And so that's an input here. And uh, now if we put a load into the PR2, the value of 30,000, for example, now timer 2 is going to count up from 0 to 30,000. And then on the next tick, it's going to roll over to 0 again. It won't count all the way up to 65,000 or 2 to the 16 minus 1. So uh, this is one thing that we can do. One other thing that we can do with uh, timer two and three is we can make a 32-bit timer. And what that means is that basically when timer two rolls over, then it sends a pulse to timer three. So I'll just connect it here. So this is basically the least significant bits of the count. And once this rolls over at typically 2 to the 16 minus 1, then it's going to send a pulse to timer 3. And now the 16 bits of timer 3 are going to hold the 16 most significant bits. So now we can count from 0 
up to 2 to the 32 minus 1, or over 4 billion, using these two counters chained. So uh, we have a choice. We can use five 16-bit timers, or we can take pairs 2 and 3 and make one 32-bit timer out of them. And you can also do the same with 4 and 5. Timer 1 can never be used as part of a 32-bit timer. But timer 2 and 3 can be chained to make a 32-bit timer. Timer 4 and 5 can be also. And so now this becomes one 32-bit counter or timer, not two separate 16-bit ones. And in this case, it's still the value of PR2 or PR4 in this case that determines when the entire 32-bit rolls over. If you don't set this value, uh, then it's always going to count to the maximum number and then roll over after that. And we'll talk next more about the special function registers used to control the timers.